In today's readings, in particular the first reading and the gospel reading, the theme of prayer is emphasized. And part of what's being emphasized is the importance of persistence in prayer, which we can expand to say also being regular and faithful about prayer, but also praying with great faith, great confidence, believing that what we are asking for, we will get. Now notice how our Lord says, ask and it will be given you. Most of us would probably say, yeah, right. In other words, most of us have probably asked for many things in prayer and didn't get it. So how do we reconcile this? St. Paul tells us that often the reason we don't get what we ask for is because we ask amiss. Now we might argue, no, what we're asking for is really and truly good. But you see, the reality is that maybe it's not the right time. Maybe God wants to give us something better. But it's also true to say that God does not grant a miracle every time we ask him for a miracle. There are many things that we can pray for, many things that we can ask for. But one of the things that is common that many people ask for is for their own health or sometimes the health of a loved one. And as we know, very often our health doesn't really improve, neither does the health of our loved one, and sometimes we lose our loved ones. Now imagine if God answered everybody's prayer and granted a miracle every time a person asked with faith. Well, we wouldn't really get sick, or if we did, it would be for a very short period of time, and no one would ever die. And so God can't grant us these miracles every time we ask because God has to allow nature to take its course. We're all going to get sick at some point and we're all going to die at some point and it's necessary that that happens. But it is true that sometimes God does answer prayer. And we might ask the question, well, how come my prayers aren't answered? And some people would go even further, and they would even question the efficacy of prayer itself. You know, some people say, oh, well, prayer, when you pray, you just kind of get into a state. It's kind of like meditation. It's kind of good for you, but you're not really connecting with God. That's what they would say. But that's false. We are connecting God with God. You know, some people think, oh, you know, God is very distant. He doesn't really interact with human beings. He doesn't really care about us. And that's totally false. So the whole point is that every time we are praying, we are connecting with God and we are receiving good things from God. Now note when you, if you read this carefully, you know, sometimes in a translation from the original language to, to our modern language, you may lose some of it. So when our Lord says, ask and it will be given you, he doesn't say that you're going to get the very thing you're asking for. And then he goes on to say, you know, if your child asks for, uh, for a fish, what father would give a snake instead of a fish? In other words, you're giving something else, but he's trying to point out that God is more loving than even earthly fathers, that he's going to give something really good, even though we may not always get what exactly we wanted. So is prayer effective? The saints say that more things are wrought by prayer than anything else. If you do research on the internet, you could probably find arguments for both in favor of prayer and arguments against prayer. You know, somebody might write in and say, well, I decided to check this out and I prayed a novena for nine days and I didn't win the lottery as I expected to. Therefore, prayer doesn't work. Well, obviously, God is not going to allow everyone to win the lottery just because we pray for that. But there are websites where you can find and it's, it's been indicated that they've done studies and they've taken two groups of people that have some illness and one group prays and the other group does not pray and the group that prays does better. And they've gone further and they've taken another 
uh, set of two groups, both with the same kind of illness, and they had a third group. And this third group was assigned to pray for one of the two groups, and neither group was told which group was being prayed for. And the group that was being prayed for did much better. Interestingly enough, psychologists, uh, uh, psychiatrists also will testify that their patients, those who have faith and pray, do much better than those who do not. So prayer is not just a psychological exercise. Prayer is definitely connecting with God and God interacting with us and giving us his blessings and his graces and sometimes even miracles. Now we might question, you know, why aren't there more miracles? Well, when we look at the Catholic Church, in the Catholic Church we have tons of miracles compared to any other religion, and that's an indication that the Catholic Church is the true church. So every time someone is declared a saint, there has to be two authentic miracles. Or think, for example, of the apparitions of Our Lady in Lourdes in 1858. And this miraculous spring of water that produces gallons and gallons of water every single day to this very day, these are miraculous waters, and many people have been healed by drinking or washing in the water. And so, and they have um, a lot of the sick, people who are in, in wheelchairs and, and bedridden, they bring these people there to Lourdes, hoping that they will be healed. And they have a Eucharistic procession. And during the Eucharistic procession, at one point, the people, especially the sick, are blessed with our Eucharistic Lord. And it is especially then that most of the miracles take place. Thousands of miracles have taken place in Lourdes. And they take place at that time to remind us that miracles come from God. And to remind us that God is aware of our sufferings. And God does sometimes intervene in a miraculous way. Spiritual authors point out that the reason that God doesn't intervene more often is because he knows exactly how often to intervene, just to convince us, just to make us realize that he is there, that he hears our prayers, that he cares about us, and to give us the faith to persevere in prayer, because who knows, we might get a miracle someday. You know, I, I talk about Lourdes, and it's kind of far away. Miracles continue to this day in Lourdes, but even closer to home, in Montreal, St. Andre Bisset, who died, I think it was 1938. And through his intercession, thousands of miracles took place, some of them very extraordinary miracles, miracles of great healing. And people just so quickly forget. Now, granted, St. Andre Bisset is a great saint, and he attributed all his miracles to the intercession of St. Joseph. So when we pray for others, they will receive graces too, perhaps even a miracle. In fact, Our Lady of Fatima, who appeared in 1917 in Fatima, Portugal, she said many go to hell simply because there is no one to pray for them. So you don't need to be a great saint like St. Andre Bisset to obtain God's graces for someone. You know, for most of us, there's probably someone in our life, maybe a family member or a relative or a close friend who's away from the practice of the faith. Maybe they're leading very sinful lives. And you have the ability by means of your prayers to save that person, to obtain graces for that person. They may not convert right away, but God is going to use those prayers, those graces that you obtain for that person, hopefully at some point, to enlighten that person. They still have to choose freely to believe in God, but your prayers can go a long way. And you could add sacrifices, self-denial, fasting to your prayers to make them even more effective. We have the ability to do this. We saw in today's first reading how Abraham interceded on behalf of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God listened to the prayer of Abraham. He was willing to spare Sodom and Gomorrah. We too need to pray for others, and we need to pray for ourselves with ever greater faith, ever greater conviction, 
with perseverance, with consistency.